Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Janfrido. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today about the React Native Library. Uh, for those who don't know, React Native is a library that can be used to build mobile apps for iOS and Android. So um, before this, I was a teacher, so I love putting objectives up on the board, so I'm going to start by doing that. So um, in teaching, when we give objectives, we do SWBAT, SWBAT, which means students will be able to. So here, we're going to do developers will be able to. So our objectives are developers will be able to learn the process of starting a React Native app, recognize the similarities and differences between React Native and React Web, and recognize the important tags of the React Native library. OK, quick agenda. First of all, we're just going to talk about what is React Native, what are the similarities and differences with the web, uh, how do you start an app, how do you initialize one. We're going to take a look at some really basic bare bones app, and then kind of a live code, sort of. So, uh, first of all, what is React Native? Um, so React Native is a JavaScript library that allows you to build mobile apps for Android and iOS using the same design that you would do for React Web. Um, so what's so cool about React Native is that you could start writing mobile apps today without knowing Swift, Objective-C, or Java. You can just start right now writing in React, writing in JavaScript. Um, and what makes it so cool is that you can also, you can incorporate code from those other languages in React app if you wanted to. And it's cross-platform out of the box. You write one app and it works for iOS and Android. And there's also a third-party project right now that would even make it work on the web. So you write one app and it does everything. That's what makes React Native so cool. It's what makes it so powerful. So some differences with React. It doesn't use... Uh, HTML tags like React does, like you would find in, a, in your JSX, um, but it uses tags provided by the library. Uh, styling is done on the component rather than through a separate CSS file or something like Bootstrap. Uh, truth of the matter is, React Native is still a fairly young library, so it doesn't have much third-party um, styling. So you're going to have to do it all yourself. But much smaller screen, you kind of have a sense of what a good app looks like. So a lot easier to do than styling web. Um, and also, it allows for integration of native modules written in Objective-C, Swift, or Java. Um, similarities, pretty much everything else. Um, you use Redux. You can use third-party APIs. You do AJAX requests the same. So pretty much just like Stephen Colbert said, I am American, and so can you, I am mobile development, and so can you. So if you leave here thinking that, wait, I already know how to do this. You pretty much taught me a bunch of stuff I already know. I've done my job. Because this is very similar to React, and I want you to see that and possibly integrate it into your stackathons, your capstones, your side projects later on. Um, so let's talk about initializing an app. What are you going to do? First of all, you're going to need to install some things up front. You're going to need um, Node, um, which you already have. Watchman, which you can install through Homebrew, the React Native CLI, which is an NPM module, uh, React, obviously, and then Xcode if you're developing for iOS, or Android Studio if you're developing for Android. So how do you initialize an app? So in the command line, you type in three commands, react-native init albums, if you're making an app called albums, cd into albums, and then react-native-run iOS. And then you get an app that looks like this. So this starts up an iPhone simulator. Um, sorry for Android developers out there. I did this on iOS, so that's what we're going to run with. So it starts up, looks just like this. Uh, you press Command-D to access your developer tools. Um, and this will look like this. So obviously, we're developers. We have bugs. We need a console. So React Native provides that through Command-D. You click Show Remote Console or debug JS remotely, excuse me, and you get a console up here like you see on the slide. And you can check all your console logs right in there. All right, so how do we plug in? So this is a super basic React Native app. Um, so let's run through a few things on here. So the first thing we see is at the top. We're importing the tags we're going to use. Um, I know it's a bit difficult to see in the screen, but we're importing app registry, text, and view. Um, down here, we see how we're using those tags. So we're returning this JSX. 
Um, so you have a view tag, which is very much like your div tag. It's kind of like your, kind of like your multi-tool. Like you, you're going to use the view tag like you use your div in HTML. Um, and then in it, you have your text tag, which is like a paragraph tag or an H1 tag, anything that would render text. Um, and then right in there, you just type your contact. So here we have hello there. I'm a React Native app. Below here, we see we have styles. We're doing styles through a styles object. Um, and then at the bottom, this is how you register your app and you make it work. So app registry dot register component. And then you basically do this, this boilerplate, and you get your app up and running. All right. So here's some useful tags for React Native. So like I said, the view, that's your multi-tool. That's your div tag. Text, your basic text tag. Text input, gets text from users. Image, renders images, obviously. Uh, touchable opacity is a basic touch tag. So if you touch something wrapped in a touchable opacity tag, it will kind of fade in and fade back out. Fade out and fade back in. Um, and then we have scroll view and list view, which are both meant for rendering lists and making content scrollable. All right, so let's take a look at something a little bit more um, complicated. Not too much more complicated, but a little bit more. We're going to take a look at a button. So what we see here, this slide here is to show you that just like in React, I have a component called app within a view tag. So you nest components just like you do in React. So let's take a look at the render function function of app. So it looks like this. Um, within it, you have this button component. Um, now, the button component is not a React Native tag. It's not something it gives you. That's something you have to make. Um, so let's take a look at the button. So as we see, button is wrapped in, like I said, touchable opacity. So touchable opacity has an on press um, attribute that you can assign to a function. And it, you can style it just like you would anything else. So if you take a look below, the styling of the styling object makes it look like the button you see on the screen here. So you see it looks pretty much like an iOS native app, uh, button that you would find in any iOS app. So pretty easy to make, right? Um, all right, so let's take a look at images. All right, so here we see we're importing an image tag. Um, in order to show an image on the screen, you have to put in um, an object URI colon the path to that image. So let's take a look. We should see the image, right? Wait, not there. Maybe not. All right, so the funny thing about images in React Native is that they don't have height and width out of the box. You have to give it to them explicitly. So to do that, you simply make a styles object with height and width. And so you get this. We have our image. OK. So one of the big things about styling in uh, React Native is that it makes use of Flexbox. So this is not a talk on Flexbox. I'm not about to go into that right now. But some quick things to know about it are that flex direction is for rendering content horizontally or vertically. Justify content determines distribution among the primary axis. Align items determines alignment along, along the secondary axis. Uh, axis excuse me. OK, um, so let's see something quickly in action. I want to ask you guys, do you guys like T-Swift? Yeah, OK, we're in T-Swift. Awesome. All right. So this is a very basic album app that I made through a React Native course. Um, so we see, oh, wait, that's not what I wanted. This is a basic album. OK, so we see T-Swift here. All right, let's go see our other albums. Wait, it's not working. Why is it not working? All right, so there's another gotcha of React Native. So one of the things you have to do with React Native is if you want to make content scrollable, you have to explicitly tell it to be scrollable. So instead of a view tag, we're going to inter in, uh, bring in a scroll view. Then we wrap this in scroll view. And we refresh. We see now that we can scroll. But wait, it's still bouncing back to the top. Why is it doing that? Another gotcha with scrolling content. 
So to do that, you have to, on the outermost tag, you have to set a style, which is equal to, you have to set the flex equal to 1. And if we do that, then we should see, we can see all the T-Swift albums. All right. So now, um, so some key takeaways for React Native. Um, the hardest thing about learning React Native is learning React itself, which everyone in this room has already done. So be aware of the high use tags and their functions, so things like view, text, touchable opacity, image, scroll view, um, and list view. List view is another one for rendering content. I recommend you take a look at it if you want to take a look at React Native. Um, and then be aware of the gotchas, like images, give explicit height and width. You have to make content scrollable using the scroll view. Styling's manual, and um, Another thing, unfortunately, so deploying on iOS is still going to cost you like a native app would. You have to have an Apple developer license, which can be costly. But you don't have to learn Swift or Objective-C, so it might be worth it. Um, all right, but my number one takeaway for sure is this. Like, if you know React, you know React Native. So um, I highly recommend, if you're interested in checking out more, uh, Steven Greider's course on React Native on Udemy was very helpful. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, so thanks for listening, and I hope you can use this in your projects in the future.